In today's video, I want to cover the recent document released by the NSA on best practices for securing your home network. I'll cover the highlights of this document and inject some of my own thoughts and recommendations along the way. If you want to know more about this, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. Before we start, I want to credit Steve Gibson of the Security Now podcast for identifying this and making people aware of this document. As this is a nine-page document, I won't cover all of it, but I do want to cover some of the main key points. I encourage you to download and review the document on your own, and I'll post a link to the document in the video description below. The recommendations in this document apply to devices including computers, laptops, printers, mobile phones, tablets, security cameras, home appliances, and all IoT devices. One of the first recommendations is to upgrade to a modern operating system and to keep that operating system updated. I know there are some of you who refuse to upgrade as you're comfortable with the old versions, or in some cases your hardware doesn't support it, but it's always recommended to stay current, which is something I've believed in for many years. The biggest challenge here is that it also applies to IoT devices, which as you know, are sometimes never updated. Make sure you periodically check for any updates on all your IoT devices. As always, if there's an option to update automatically, you should enable that. But if automatic updates are not possible, then set up reminders to check it regularly. Though I've been using this configuration for more than 20 years, I'm surprised to see that it's in the recommendations from the NSA. Using your own router and a separate modem, if possible, is a much better way to execute control such as your Wi-Fi and guest settings. The real surprise here is the specific recommendation of creating separate wireless networks in order to create some isolation for your devices and to create network separation from more trusted devices or private devices. Since your router is the gateway into your home network, it's your first line of defense. Without proper security and patching, it's more likely to be compromised and breached across your network versus a client device. To minimize the vulnerabilities and improve security, your router should be updated to the latest patches. The important thing here is that these devices should also be replaced when they're no longer supported. And if you're not getting patches, then you need to get a different device. Given that WPA3 only recently came out in some of the newer devices, I was pleasantly surprised with this recommendation of implementing WPA3 or uh, as a backup WPA2 on wireless networks to keep your wireless communication secure. You need to ensure that your personal or ISP provided access point is capable of supporting WPA3. Most of the current Wi-Fi 6 and all of the Wi-Fi 6E access points support WPA3. If you have devices on your network that do not support WPA3, then select WPA2-3 instead. This allows newer devices to use the more secure method while still allowing older devices to connect to your network over WPA2. One note is that Wi-Fi 6E requires WPA3, so compatibility may be an issue. At a minimum, it'll require that you re-log into your devices. The NSA's recommendation is when configuring WPA3 or WPA2-3 that you use a strong passphrase with a minimum length of 20 characters. Most computers and mobile devices now support WPA3 or at a minimum WPA2. If you're planning to purchase a new device, make sure that it's WPA3 personal certified. Always change the default SSID to something unique. And going against previous recommendations from many experts, don't hide the SSID, as this adds to no additional security to your wireless network and may actually cause compatibility issues. This has been heavily debated for years, but I've never really found much value in hiding my SSID, despite many sources recommending it. It's kind of interesting to me that the NSA is recommending not hiding it. To add security to your wireless network, utilize strong network segmentation on your home network to keep your wireless communication secure. At a minimum, your wireless network should be segmented between your primary Wi-Fi, your guest Wi-Fi, and your IoT network. This segmentation keeps less secure devices from directly communicating with your more secure devices, such as your computer or your NAS, or other personal devices. I'll be doing a video on this in the future and cover simple ways of doing this using modern access points. Always use security software such as antivirus. 
Modern versions use a cloud-based reputation service for detecting the latest variants of a virus, as well as always being updated. The one issue is that many of these have to run on a device. So if you have a current firewall such as PFSense or any firewall that supports it, I would recommend also enabling virus scanning on the firewall whenever possible. That way other devices can all actually benefit from it as well. Use strong passwords. Check the strength of your password on sites like Bitwarden slash password strength and use a trusted password manager to keep things secure such as Bitwarden or 1Password. Personally, I've been using Bitwarden for a while and I really like it. As I've discussed on most of my NAS security videos, always use a standard user account and not an admin account. These are easy to set up on things like Windows and various storage units, and they can save you if you get attacked by limiting access to critical files and features. In Windows, it's slightly inconvenient as you'll have to type a password when you install anything, but in the end, it's really worth it. To reduce the risk of ransomware and hardware failures, back up your data on external drives using encryption and remove the device when you're not backing up. Leave your computers in sleep mode so they can download updates when you're not using them and remember to reboot them regularly. Turn off connected devices when you're away on vacation or out of town for an extended period of time. Always disable the ability to access your router remotely as this should be done locally. And if you frequently need to access it while you're away, then use a VPN. If you still have a device that supports UPnP, disable it and consider getting a newer device. Most of the newer devices no longer support that feature for security reasons. One area that's often overlooked in recent months is that the security of your home network and your work network are now a lot more important and to a degree a lot more integrated. When accessing your work remotely, make sure you're using a secure VPN. One of the largest threat surfaces is email. Email is arguably the weakest link. Avoid opening attachments or clicking on any links before identifying who the sender is. If you get something from your bank or your institution, don't click on the link and just go directly to that bank or institution sites. Prevent the reuse of passwords, and this is where a good password manager comes in to help you manage complex passwords as well as not duplicate them. Always use a current and modern browser and keep it patched. Browsers like Chrome, Edge, or Firefox are updated frequently to help keep you safe. Use strong authentications in your router and minimize password recovery options. Disable features that enable programs to remember passwords and use a password manager. When it comes to challenge questions for password recovery, consider using the wrong answer to a challenge question. And always use multi-factor authentication. And if you have the option, use an app-based method for better security. As the security may be weak on public hotspots, avoid using them. Whenever possible, use your own personal hotspot or your data plan on your phone or use a VPN such as NordVPN. Transferring email from work to home can really put you at risk. Ideally, you want to use a company-supplied device and a supplied account when accessing your information or your files from work. Use a VPN to connect to and from work. Consider segregating tasks by device to minimize your risk. Keeping certain tasks on one device, such as financial information, can, can prevent problems. I'll post some links to some videos I did for even more segregation using VLANs if you want to take your security to the next level. Well, that's about it for today's video. Please download the file from the NSA's website. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.